I recently spoke to a medical student who asked me for career advice. She was an excellent student and had a dream to become an ophthalmologist. I looked at her CV. She had written 10 or more research papers, most of which were in ophthalmology. She also had near perfect grades. After spending two weeks in a clinic with me, I was duly impressed. She was already functioning at the level of a junior resident. The question my student asked was, ophthalmology is a competitive residency. What should I do as a backup? Now, here is how I look at things. There are times in life that you want to manage your risk. And there are times in life when you need to go all in. I think for CARMS, while I understand that here at Queen's, we only accept two residents from a pool of nearly 100 applicants, that you really have to go for it and show 100% commitment to realize your dream. Now, there are other times when I would certainly say that this all-in approach is not what you want to do, like when you are investing, because going all-in could mean losing it all. For instance, I remember going to school with a colleague of mine who was obsessed with the tech market in the late 90s. He was so convinced in the dot-com era that he was trading options. To boot, he was using borrowed money to try to compound his gains. Within a three-month period, his mid-seven-figure portfolio imploded, and because he couldn't make his payments for his loan, he lost his house. At least he still had his medical degree to put food on the table. Unlike Carms, I believe in hedging your bets when it comes to your finances. I believe in the sanctity of spreading risk amongst many small bets. In short, the goal is to be a diversified doctor. What exactly is diversification and how does it work? Let's say that we have saved $10,000. We could take that entire sum and put it into one stock. Perhaps the stock we choose would be in a biotech company that we think is going to have spectacular phase three results. If the trial fails, the stock could drop significantly. If, however, instead of choosing only one stock, we choose to put $1,000 into 10 companies, we are spreading out the risk significantly. Or we can choose a fund, which spreads the risk over a basket of companies in a variety of industries, including those in agriculture, technology, finance, and consumer goods. Perhaps diversify even further. As interest rates rise, the stock market may fall, and we might be interested in further spreading our risk in non-correlative assets that frequently rise when the stock market drops. To remember this non-correlative concept and one that champions diversification, I would like to introduce you to my blog model. Here, the B stands for bonds. These can be corporate, government, or municipal bonds. Here, you are essentially loaning your money, getting a rate of return, and will be paid back the principal down the road. The L is for location, because real estate agents live by the mantra location, location, location. Here, of course, I'm talking about real estate, which over the past 30 years has outperformed the stock market in many locations in Canada. The O is for other. Here I mean other places you can purchase stocks, like emerging markets in other indices, like in Europe and Asia, or alternative currencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Lastly, the G is for gold. Good old steady gold, which was the gold standard currency for many centuries on many continents. Holding even just a little bit of it is always a solid hedge against bubbles and inflation. So my advice to my budding ophthalmologist is to certainly go all in on CARMS. But when it comes to your portfolio, the key is to diversify. And just remember to blog your way to growing your nest egg. But don't just take my recommendation. It's always best to seek a financial specialist to get personalized advice.